So I'll share uh, the link of the Sutta. The Sutta is Angutra Nikaya. Uh, this is book of eight and the Sutta number is 19 in the book of eight. Paha Arada Sutta. Paharada is the name of the uh, Yaka uh, who is uh, come to the Buddha. Uh, Yakas are uh, a class of beings. So uh, there are uh, different class of be uh, beings and Yakas are uh, uh, one class of being and uh, this class of uh, uh, of beings uh, which uh, Paharada is uh, belonging to is Asuras. Asuras, uh, uh, there is an explanation given by Buddha uh, Dasa. He says that uh, 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 there was a uh, gods were there and they had a fight with the kingdom of the 33 uh, gods where Saka is the, uh, the ruler of the uh, 33 uh, kingdom of the 33 gods. So they uh, kind of had a, a fight and they, they lost the fight because they were intoxicated. So Sura uh, is considered to be uh, uh, liquor. We say no, Sura mere majja pamadatana. So we say that we don't have any liquor or intoxicating uh, uh, things. That is the precepts. So, uh, so they said that we will not drink Sura, so Asura. So that is how their name came to be Asura. Uh, and in Indian, uh, Asura have uh, a very uh, kind of a rich uh, history. Uh, and they have, uh, uh, there is a Indra, uh, which is a uh, god, which is very similar to Saka in Indian mythology. And Asuras are a permanent, uh, they are considered demons. Uh, but in uh, Buddhist uh, cosmology, asuras are not demons. They are a different class of beings. So most probably those uh, are the uh, earthbound devas. They may uh, come under earthbound devas because they were uh, staying in Mount. Uh, what is, uh, it is uh, considered Mounts. Uh, what was the uh, name of that Mount? I'll just find out one second. Meru, Sumeru. So we, uh, uh, Meru is uh, in Indian mythology. Sumeru is uh, uh, under uh, Pali mythology. So they were staying. So I'll start the sutta, uh, 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 the text of the sutta. On one occasion, the blessed one was dwelling at Veera Jana, at the foot of Nareluru's Neem tree. Then Paharada, ruler of the Asuras approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him and stood to one side. The Blessed One then said to him, Paharada, do the Asuras take delight in the great ocean? Bante, the Asuras take delight in the great uh, ocean. But Paharada, how many ast uh, uh, astonishing and amazing qualities do the Asuras see in the great ocean because of which they take delight in it? The Asura see eight astounding and amazing qualities in the great ocean because of which they take delight in the uh, in it. What eight? One, the great ocean Bante slants, slopes, inclines gradually, not dropping off abruptly. This is the first astonish, uh, astounding and amazing quality that the Asura see in the great ocean because of which they take delight in it. So uh, whenever you go to a beach or something like that, when you are walking slowly, slowly you go, go into deeper water. So there is a slant uh, and uh, the uh, as you walk more, you go into a more depth. So that is one uh, quality of the ocean. Again, the great ocean is stable and does not overflow its boundaries. This is the second astounding and amazing quality that the Asuras see in the great ocean. Again, the great ocean does not associate with a corpse, but quickly carries it to the coast and wash it, uh, washes it ashore. This is the third astounding and amazing quality that the Asura see in the great ocean. 
so many times we find that there are the news also that uh, some uh, person had drowned but uh, his uh, body was found on the shore after some certain amount of time so that is uh, the quality of the ocean again when the great rivers uh, Ga uh, ganga yamuna achi ravat saruha and mahi reach the great ocean they give up their former names and designations and are simply called the great ocean this is the fourth astounding and amazing quality that the asuras see in the uh, great ocean so uh, whatever the river is there uh, when the water comes it all becomes the ocean so there is no distinction in the water based on where it came from again whatever uh, streams in the world flow into the great, great ocean However much rain falls into uh, it from the sky, neither a decrease nor a filling up can be seen in the great ocean. This is the fifth astounding and amazing quality that the As Asuras see in the uh, great ocean. So this is uh, when the uh, I think the waters are stable. This is not uh, taking into account the uh, I think the climate change or the uh, glaciers. I think so. So, but uh, the oceans remain stable. Again, the great ocean has but one taste, the taste of salt. This is the sixth astounding and amazing quality that the uh, Asura see in the great ocean. So, wherever you uh, taste the water of the uh, ocean, it will be salty. Again, the great ocean contains many precious substances, numerous precious substances such as pearls, gems, lupes, couch, quartz, coral, silver, gold, rubies, and cat's eye. This is the seventh astounding and amazing quality that the Asuras see in the great ocean. Again, the great ocean and currently even oil and gas. So <laughs> there's a lot of oil and gas in the ocean. <laughs> Again, the great ocean uh, is the abode of great beings such as Timis, Timi, uh, Timin Galas, Timi, Ra, Api, Galas, Asuras, Nagas, Gandabas. So maybe Asuras also like to stay over there. That's the reason Buddha started with the questioning on the ocean. Gandabas. They are in the great ocean beings with bodies 100 yojanas long, 200, 300, 400, 500 yojanas long. This is the great astounding and amazing quantity that the Asuras see in the great ocean because of which they uh, take delight in it. Yojana is a mark of distance. I am not uh, particularly sure how, what is the mark of distance, but Yojana is a, a mark of distance uh, which is uh, given. So there are, uh, like you see that there are, there is a uh, giant squids are there, which may be bigger than the whales. So there may be other uh, beings also which are big uh, in the oceans. Uh, these uh, are the uh, eight astounding and amazing qualities that the Asuras see in the great ocean because of which they take delight in it. But do the uh, uh, bhikkhus take delight in uh, this Dhamma and discipline? Para, uh, paharada. The bhikkhus uh, do take delight in this Dhamma and discipline. But Bhante, how many uh, astounding and amazing qualities do the bhikkhus see in this Dhamma and discipline because of which they take delight in it? So now uh, Buddha started with the question about the ocean and he uh, replied in the ocean. So now he is saying, uh, uh, how do uh, the, the, the qualities of the Dhamma? So Buddha is kind of uh, is going to tailor this uh, response according to what uh, uh, the Paharada said, because then he will be able to understand what is being communicated. The Vikku see eight extraordinary and amazing qualities in this Dhamma and discipline because of which they take delight in it. What eight? Just as Paharada, the great ocean slants, slopes and inclines uh, gradually, not dropping off abruptly. So too in this Dhamma and dis discipline, penetration to final knowledge occurs by gradual training, gradual activity, gradual practice, not abruptly. This is the first astounding and amazing quality that the uh, uh, bhikkhus see in this the, uh, dhamma and discipline because of which they take delight in it. So uh, as uh, there is uh, other suttas also where the Buddha kind of explains how 
this is a gradual practice and ganaka modula anasutta is there uh, uh, where uh, uh, the accountant comes and asks about uh, about the practice so this is the way uh, of the practice it is, does not happen uh, 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 means abruptly so when uh, somebody practices and practices on a regular basis then uh, he will definitely get uh, the result because it will go slowly it will develop so there is no abrupt uh, things which happens because it is based on our understanding of the uh, subject which is uh, the object of your meditation and the three uh, characteristics which is uh, impermanence uh, dukkha and uh, the impersonal nature of all things so as one uh, gains understanding of this the in the gradual slow manner the person will reach the goal just as the great ocean is stable and does not overflow its boundaries so too when i have prescribed a training rule for my disciples they will not transgress it even for the life sake this is the second and astounding amazing quality that the bhikkhu see in this the mind discipline what he uh, buddha is talking about now is vinaya so bhikkhus are given vinaya which are the rules of conduct for lay people it will be the five precepts uh, but uh, for a bhikkhu it would be the vinaya's rules just as the great ocean does not associate with the corpse but quickly carries it to the coast and washes it washes it ashore so too the sangha does not associate with a person who is immoral of bad character impure of suspect behavior secretive in his actions secretive in his actions means uh, there are certain uh, uh, things a, a bhikkhu may do wrong but he has to kind of disclose it to the sangha he has to disclose it to the nearest monk uh, in, in the uh, time frame which is the immediate time frame uh, he has to disclose it if he uh, delays it by a day then uh, the uh, the recourse is that he will get uh, one more day of uh, kind of a, uh, uh, there is there are certain actions uh, corrective actions so the corrective actions will be uh, extended based on the time he keeps those things secret so uh, to reveal what uh, uh, a person does wrong immediately is the imperative over here so uh, secretive in his actions means he is not revealing his Uh, faults or uh, sometimes uh, there are missteps in the life or life so they have to be revealed sorry uh, not an ascetic uh, those claiming to be one not an ascetic those claiming to be one is that uh, they are uh, a, a monk but they uh, have committed one of the four parajikas that is killing somebody intentionally stealing something intentionally or uh, uh, misrepresenting uh, their uh, psychic abilities uh, just to gain uh, uh, a kind of uh, favor i think uh, the fourth is uh, to cause schism in the sangha so uh, if uh, one of those uh, things uh, a person does then at uh, at a uh, uh, image uh, sorry uh, the other is uh, the sexual uh, any uh, sexual uh, activity so if uh, those four any four of those uh, 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 actions uh, as uh, bhikkhu does the immediate moment that uh, bhikkhu is not considered to be a bhikkhu he is not considered to be a monk so uh, not an ascetic though claiming to be one means the person who has committed par parajika has not kind of disclosed it and the other uh, aspect of uh, parajika uh, is mentioned over here is not a celibate though claiming to be one so celibacy is also a uh, uh, one of the four uh, this thing uh, 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 the main uh, rules of vinaya those are the four first rules of vinaya so vinaya has many rules uh, one uh, of the rules of the vinaya is uh, based on the uh, basic rules which is called parajika it's a defeat if you break those rules which i explained then there are uh, rules which are uh, rules which are have to be kind of resolved by the sangha so there is a uh, 20 uh, sangha members get together this is revealed the uh, uh, what has been done wrong and then they will give a corrective action then there is uh, relinquishment 
relinquishment is uh, if you have uh, attained something which is not to be attained like uh, there is a robe which has to be kept uh, with you for uh, 10 days but you have kept it for 11 days so you have to relinquish that robe uh, so by uh, somebody uh, gives you some gift and uh, that gift uh, is uh, something which you, uh, you are not supposed to have then you have to relinquish like food is given a uh, certain amount uh, a certain uh, time of the day we can take uh, certain foods so that those kind of rules are there where a, a person relinquishes then there are rules where uh, uh, the uh, bhikkhu has to just uh, confess uh, if uh, there are minor rules uh, in uh, the uh, there are many many minor rules are there like uh, some uh, one rule which uh, ha happened about in the kosambi where they were fighting was for the water when you go uh, to the bath bathroom and there's a uh, pitcher over there you don't keep water in that so uh, some uh, beings can lay eggs like uh, the mosquitoes can lay egg on that so uh, that that uh, you have to uh, empty the water and keep the uh, uh, the, uh, the receptacle empty. So if that is not done, then that is a, a minor uh, offense. So you just they have to just confess that I I uh, forgot to empty the vessel. So that that becomes uh, those are the way uh, person kind of reveals what has been done uh, wrong. So not a celibate though claiming to be one. That is the parajika then. Inwardly rotten, corrupt, deprived, rather it quickly uh, assembles and expels it. So when uh, the, uh, the Sankha knows, they come together and then they expel the uh, bhikkhu. Even though he is seated in the midst of the Sangha of bhikkhus, yet he is far from the Sangha and the Sangha is far from him. This is the uh, astron astonishing and amazing quality that the who see in this Dhamma and discipline. So uh, the Sangha uh, can uh, take some actions and the, uh, the greatest action the Sangha can take is to ask, uh, tell the Bhikkhu that he is a person, no, no, a person uh, who is not uh, in the community. So he is banished from the community. So that's the highest action the Sangha can take. So it's considered very bad because there is no but he will speak to the person and they will know uh, nobody will uh, kind of uh, have any uh, uh, dealings with the person. So that's a very uh, uh, heavy uh, punishment in uh, the uh, Bhikkhu Sangha. Just as when the great rivers <coughs> reach the great ocean, they give up uh, their former names and designations and are simply called the great ocean. So too, when members of the four social classes <clears throat> These are the four social classes in India. It can be different in different parts of the uh, place, but these are the four social classes. Katyas or sh Kshatriyas are the warrior class. They were considered at, at the time of the Buddha to be the uh, foremost. They were the class from which kings used to come. So they were the uh, uh, class of uh, people where... Uh, if somebody had to be a king, uh, uh, it would be a Katya. Then there is Brahmins. Then there is Vaisyas. Vaisyas means uh, merchants, uh, uh, whoever uh, deals in buying and selling. So th those are Vaisyas. And Suddhas. Suddhas are uh, anybody who works, uh, like uh, uh, is a carpenter is there, or uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, is a farmer. So a person who works for the living, is the uh, fourth class of people. Go forth from the household life into homelessness in the Dhamma and discipline proclaimed by the Tathagata. They give up their former names and clans and are simply called ascetics following the Sakyan son. Sakya because uh, uh, Buddha came from the Sakyan clan. So Sakyan son. This is the fourth uh, astonish, astounding and Amazing quality that the bhikkhu see in this dhamma and discipline. So uh, a person may come from any background. He may be rich, he may be poor. But uh, when they come to uh, the Buddha's dis uh, uh, discipline, then everybody is equal. And one of the things uh, the Buddha uh, used to do is that the only difference between the bhikkhus is based on the seniority. 
So uh, once uh, there were a lot of uh, 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 princes who were going to get ordained. And then there was one uh, person who was uh, from the Sudha's class, a working class uh, uh, person who was a uh, barber, barber's son. So the Buddha, uh, what he did was he ordained the barber's son the first and ordained everybody else later. So everybody has to pay respect to the barber's son. So to kind of uh, emphasize that uh, whoever comes over here are all equal and only differences uh, on the based on your time of ordination. So if somebody is ordained, ordained at uh, one o'clock and somebody is ordained at one o'clock, one minute. So uh, for the lifetime, uh, the person who was ordained at one o'clock, one minute will be the junior one. And the person who was ordained as, uh, at one would be senior for the life. So that is how uh, the difference is made. Just as the great ocean has but one taste, the taste of salt, so to this dhamma and discipline has but one taste, the taste of liberation. This is the sixth astounding and amazing quality that the bhikkhus see in this dhamma and discipline. So the discipline or the uh, Buddha's uh, teaching is there for the liberation to get uh, to Nibbana, to get uh, from the uh, Dukkha uh, and to uh, uh, understand Dukkha and to get rid of the Dukkha. So this is the, uh, uh, the one taste of the Dhamma. Just as the great ocean contains many precious substances, Numerous precious substances such as pearls, etc., and cat's eye. So, too, this Dhamma and dis discipline contains many precious substances, numerous precious substances, the four establishments of mindfulness. This is Satipatthana. This is uh, going through the list of the 37 requisites of awakening. Then uh, 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 there is four uh, right strivings, that is, the right effort. Four basis of psychic uh, potency, four basis of his idipada, five spiritual fa uh, faculties and five uh, powers, seven factors of awakening, and the eightfold path. So this is the thirty-seven requisites of awakening, which uh, the, the are like the gems and uh, uh, gold and. Uh, oil and gas of uh, dhammas, uh, where you can get a lot of uh, wealth of information and a wealth of uh, uh, wisdom from this. This is the seventh astounding and amazing quality that the uh, bhikkhu see in this dhamma and dis uh, discipline. Just as the great ocean is the abode of great beings such as uh, Timis and Gandhapas, etc. And as there are in the great ocean beings with bodies 100 yojanas long, till 500 yojanas long, so too, this Dhamma and discipline is the abode of great beings, the stream enterer, the one practicing for realization of fruit of stream entry, the one's returner, the one practicing for the realization of, of the fruit of one's returning, the non-returner, the one practicing for the realization of the fruit of non-returning, the arahant, the one practicing uh, for arhantship. This is the eighth astounding and amazing quality that the Vikku see in this Dhamma and discipline, such uh, because of which they take delight in it. So those uh, eight uh, individuals or four pairs of individuals are uh, mentioned by the Buddha, the stream enterer, uh, the one, once returner, the non-returner and the arahant, the awakened person. These uh, Baharada are the eight astounding and amazing qualities that the uh, Vikku see in this Dhamma and this discipline because of which they take delight in it. So the Buddha has uh, uh, kind of uh, informed uh, Baharada about uh, the Dhamma and uh, uh, the good qualities of the Dhamma and how uh, these are the amazing things which are there in the Dhamma, in the same uh, way which he can understand in the uh, similes where uh, he is able to kind of relate to uh, it. So in this uh, manner, the Buddha is kind of uh, explaining the Dhamma uh, to uh, 
the audience which uh, is coming to him. So this is a, a sutta which is ended now. So if there are any questions about the sutta or uh, any other questions regarding practice or anything, you can ask. Are there any questions? Yes, I uh, I have a question about it. I have a question about uh, about my uh, meditation. I um, I radiate or, or in a, go in the directions. Yes, and uh, I I aim to do it for five minutes, but I I often find myself doing this for like six to eight minutes even. Yeah, is, is that like that's that's a bit long, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what do you think about that? That does not matter. See, uh, what matters is that it should feel like five minutes to you. So it is a, a impro, uh, it's a kind of an approximation that you, uh, it, it feels like five minutes, then you go to another thing. You don't kind of open your eyes and uh, look at the watch every time. If it feels like five minutes, you go to the another direction. If it feels like five minutes, again, uh, to another direction, another and this way you have uh, done the sixth direction then do all the direction as, as long as you are planning to sit. But it does not matter that uh, it is six minutes or four minutes. Uh, it is just a way of doing things. It's a uh, kind of a means to an end. So whatever uh, is the uh, feeling which you have, there is an internal clock which we have and some people are good at it, some people are not good at it. Some people are so good at it that uh, they can tell the day is time by just if you ask him uh, and if he'll say, uh, uh, yeah, now it is three o'clock and three minutes, they, they will say that. Uh, so they are, they are naturally, uh, they have a very good uh, uh, internal clock. So they can, anytime you ask them the time, they can tell the exact time. So uh, we also have some inter internet clock, but we may not be so precise. So if it is going seven minutes, it's okay. There's no uh, harm in it. So uh, you go through the directions and then go through all uh, directions uh, and uh, continue the setting. So it does not make it any uh, kind of difference. Is there a uh, way, uh, some uh, thing which happens, uh, which uh, kind of, uh, it feels like a hindrance to you? Over here, uh, when you're sitting uh, long periods. Oh no, 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 that uh, that's not the case. Okay, then it's okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Bhante, thank you so much for the talk. Uh, I have a question. I have a um, bit of an odd question, though. Yeah. So uh, recently, uh, because I was traveling. Uh, and because it was for work. So I was staying at a uh, couple of hotels um, and I was not able to sleep very well uh, in, in different hotels. And this is not the first time. So about three weeks before I was attending a conference, similar things, staying in hotels. But if I stay in, uh, let's say an Airbnb, so somebody's house, uh, or a smaller place, I sleep well. So when I didn't sleep well, it's more like waking up, you know, two o'clock in the morning and then not being able to sleep after that or mm -hmm. four o'clock in the morning and tossing and turning. So I'm just kind of curious uh, because I didn't really have this issue before. So I'm just kind of curious if anyone else who travels uh, has a similar kind of issue. So uh, this uh, can happen because see what you become more uh, sensitive to uh, uh, kind of energies. When you are uh, doing metta and uh, uh, you are doing meditation, you are more sensitive to what is happening. One uh, thing, uh, one of the gurus used to uh, say, he was a, a kind of a, 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 a multi uh, kind of a dimensional uh, guru. Uh, he used to do yagna also and he had uh, Muslim uh, teachings also and he had uh, uh, other Hindu teachings. He used to kind of mix all those things. Uh, that guru uh, uh, was before I, I came to know about uh, Buddhism and uh, I, I uh, practiced. So one thing which he used to say is you have to ensure that you take care of yourself first. That you have a, a, a way of uh, kind of shielding yourself. 
and then uh, uh, in uh, with uh, Bhante Vimal Ram Singh. I, I came to know about and uh, before that in when I was there in Thai, uh, Thailand, uh, uh, I came to know that you can put yourself in a meta bubble. Okay. So that is the, a kind of a practice where you just imagine yourself in a meta bubble and uh, that uh, way uh, you are uh, uh, you are able to kind of uh, ensure that outside energies does not kind of interfere with uh, your energies. And uh, when you are going to a, a hotel and you don't have any option to go to a, a BNB and you go to a hotel or something like that, because hotel many people come and go there are uh, they, they, and then they may be kind of in distress. People uh, may be uh, uh, kind of uh, worried or in stress. Businessmen come and go and they're uh, very stressed. And then there, there are people who uh, have lost their uh, house and they're kind of going from hotel to hotel or something or other. People are uh, traveling because somebody has uh, died or is in a hospital and uh, they are staying over there and they're worried. So all those energies are there in that uh, place. Uh, so uh, when you are going where uh, there are many people coming and going, and so then there are a kind of lot of uh, uh, noise over there. So of those energies. So if you uh, uh, go to a room or something like that, uh, first radiate metta uh, through the whole room. And then imagine yourself having a, a kind of a, 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 a metta uh, is kind of enveloping you. And then you try and see how it kind of affects. Certain uh, times when you are afraid or you get uh, sleep in the sleep also, you get some uh, a kind of a, a nightmares. That time also you can uh, do this. You can kind of imagine yourself in a metta bubble. And if you are unable to sleep, ju just imagine you are there in this metta bubble and uh, you have awareness of your body. And just uh, uh, don't toss and turn, just uh, uh, take this time as a, a time of meditation, lying down. Lying down, you just uh, 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 ensure that you are uh, kind of uh, imagining a metta bubble and uh, just the awareness of the body is your object of meditation. So if you get distracted, just uh, relax, smile, and then just be with that awareness and the awareness of the metta world. That is the only uh, thing you do. And if you uh, uh, fall asleep, you fall asleep then. So that uh, I can, uh, so you try that uh, and see how it uh, kind of changes uh, your experience. Okay, thank okay. you, Van. <laughs> so uh, any other questions? Anything related to uh, meditation or any other thing also, you can ask me. If it is. Uh, Bante, yeah. maybe uh, because uh, Bante, just now you mentioned um, the possibility of being more uh, sensitive and all that. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting because I, uh, I used to do a very simple form of uh, pranic healing and it, there's a very similar instruction of putting ourselves in a, a bubble and with certain color and like that. Uh, I'm just curious because I have been uh, practicing with the forgiveness meditation uh, as my primary object. Um, and um, of course, as a result, uh, can um, radiate uh, can radiate metta easier when I want to, or can smile easier when I want to. I, I'm just wondering if the um, increase in sensitivity to energies is a byproduct of the twin practice. It is a, a, a byproduct of any kind of spiritual practice. So if you're doing any kind of spiritual practice, you're opening yourself up to uh, kind of absorb what is there. Okay, so any kind of spiritual practice you are doing, you kind of become sensitive to that. And uh, twin practice uh, is kind of uh, teaching you what is uh, the kind of fundamental uh, kind of emotion of the, uh, the positive emotions of the universe. And this is there even if Buddhism is not there. Even if the Buddha Dhamma is not there, these emotions uh, are there, which is of metta, karuna, 
mudita and upekha so this kind of fundamental positive emotions which are there or positive energies or positive vibrations so these are kind of uh, placeholder words you know uh, they are not a precise words but uh, just to give you understanding that these are the fundamental now uh, in buddhism they would call it dhammas <clears throat> or elements so element of uh, uh, metta element of karuna element of mudita element of uh, upekha so uh, this is uh, a way of saying uh, that these are the fundamental things which are there even if buddha's teaching is not there then these emotions are uh, always there but what we are doing is the buddha saying is that he is using these teachings in a way a person makes a raft from the sticks and uh, twigs uh, in a island he gets and uh, he uses that to kind of cross the uh, uh, the river and go to the safe shore so what we are doing uh, the buddha is uh, 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 teaching is to use the same uh, emotions same uh, uh, practices same dhammas uh, uh, to reach to the ultimate goal is nibbana so uh, when we are saying that we are using this uh, 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 concept of uh, metta bubble so uh, one way is to just use it as, as just a tool of uh, uh, just keep your energies together or to kind of avoid others uh, other energy but uh, what we have is the right effort also with that the right effort is to recognize release relax re smile and uh, return so now when we are using right effort we are understanding the uh, impermanence of those things because they are not there they came into being and uh, uh, again they will kind of vanish so that is the impermanence the dukha is your fighting with that uh, emotion or uh, situation so what is dukha uh, there is a truth and you are opposing that truth when this opposing is there that is the uh, dukha you are creating so if there is a uh, inconvenience or there is a situation uh, which is there which is painful which is physical pain but you uh, are kind of uh, recognizing that this is a impermanent thing it has come it will go away but not resisting it so when you are not resisting it you are not creating dukkha then another thing you should understand is the impersonal nature of the thing because they have not come because you have asked them to come and they cannot go because you are asking them to go so that is the impersonal nature so that is the uh, understanding of the things which are there uh, we get a, a deeper understanding so that is the kind of a contribution of the buddha where he kind of uses the same uh, uh, phenomena or uh, the same uh, things which are there in this world and he is teaching us how they are uh, reality and when you are learning that you are developing your wisdom because uh, wisdom is linked to dependent origination and uh, this three characteristics so dependent origination is also what uh, that uh, if there is a contact there is a feeling and if there is a feeling there is a uh, i like it i don't like it and then there is all the uh, things why i uh, clinging is there i i don't like it or like it and then uh, you go to the birth of action and then there is some um, action and then there is a death of action so the same thing is happening when you are going uh, to uh, a place there is a uh, there is an energy your energy uh, interacts with your energy and there is a dislike and you say i don't want it so there is a contact then there is a uh, feeling which comes that feeling you say i don't like it when you say i don't like it you have all the reasons for i don't like it and because of which you uh, kind of resist it that is the birth of action because that is your habitual tendency i don't like it i'll resist it so when you resist it uh, then what happens is you are giving energy to the same thing the same uh, uh, feeling it becomes more stronger it comes back and then the cycle uh, uh, kind of uh, perpetuates so uh, whatever you resist persists that is what uh, 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 there is a uh, heart was uh, uh, used to say in his teachings whatever you resist persists 
So this is how uh, whatever uh, you are resisting precepts because Buddha is saying a precise way how it is do, uh, getting uh, done through dependent origination. So every phenomena which is happening can be a, a, a basis of our learning. So there is one simple thing is to use it to have a good sleep. Another way is that by using the same uh, uh, method, you are learning about the reality of how phenomena arises and how it kind of uh, turns into dukkha and how uh, uh, this is an impersonal process. So we can just uh, uh, look at it without getting affected by it. So th that is how uh, you use this teaching. So when you are uh, doing a meta bulb, you are also having the right effort in this. Bhante, very interesting. Uh, can I ask some more based on that comment yes. earlier? So because yes. um, uh, I was in a, a forest recently, a very old forest, a bit like um, Everett's background now with very, very uh -huh. tall trees. Yeah, yeah, redwood uh, forest. The energy, uh, so when I just, I didn't even um, consciously want to meditate. So basically I just closed my eyes and the energy at that point was very uh, intense. So um, I don't know if that was considered a distraction, but now that I'm reflecting at that point, should I have just uh, put myself in a meta bubble or should I have just uh, observe and let it be? So uh, one, uh, one way of uh, seeing it is in the uh, way of Chanda. Chanda is the desire. So uh, uh, Pada we just uh, mentioned about. So uh, we uh, want uh, something to happen, you know. So uh, that wanting something to happen is to kind of have uh, uh, the uh, calmness of mind. So if it is uh, helping us become calm, then we uh, uh, go with it. So the uh, Buddha's uh, disciples, uh, monks are also going to the forest for that precise reason because that, this is more kind of conducive to meditation. At that point, uh, you don't need to kind of uh, do the things which are uh, kind of directional, you know. Directional is you one thing which takes you to the goal. The goal requires uh, one of the uh, aspects is to be calm and to have a uh, uh, mindfulness, okay? So uh, mindfulness and collectedness, which we say. And if it con is conducive to uh, mindfulness and collectedness, then you do not uh, 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 kind of uh, block that thing. So if uh, some place you get disturbed, then you create an uh, environment where you kind of shield yourself from that disturbance, okay? Uh, and uh, by uh, doing that, you will be able to kind of be mindful and uh, you will have more uh, insight. And when you have uh, happening, uh, this happens naturally, then let it happen because it is directionally in the uh, direction of uh, going towards your uh, collectedness and mindfulness. So if that is a good uh, thing, <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, Bhante. So just to summarize, to be safe, I mean, is a general rule just to uh, kind of wherever we go, just to maintain a kind of metta, uh, loving kindness kind of energy in any situation. That's the yeah. safest? Yeah, that is uh, correct. Uh, for any situation, you should have uh, the metta uh, and you have to uh, kind of practice in a way that you, uh, Bhante kind of uh, teaches us that uh, when you are going to office or you have, when you are traveling also, you can just send metta to all the people around you. If you are in a car, then you can just send to all the people who are driving uh, besides you. So that is the way you can uh, practice doing it in the day, in your daily life. So uh, wherever you are, uh, you will be able to use this uh, process of metta. So the general rule should be that you are sending metta uh, in all the uh, directions. And But if you see that there is a, a, a disturbance which is coming or the, uh, you are getting kind of affected by the environment, 
then uh, you uh, kind of uh, first ensure that you are in a more uh, secure uh, place mentally. So th then that meta bubble helps you. In uh, some uh, sometimes you. Uh, uh, psychic uh, uh, phenomena is there. That is also a thing you may feel that there is a certain energy which is there over here. So then also you kind of shield yourself by making a meta weapon. Thank you, Bante. Very helpful. Okay. Is there any other questions? So I think we'll end this. Huh? We have if there are no questions. Okay. May suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So, uh, Wednesday, um, we'll ask sister to uh, come once again. So, let us see. So, you can stop uh, the recording uh, if you want. Huh? <laughs> I'll just